okay, and now for our regularly scheduled video. And I will say offhand, this will probably be, probably will be a short one because um, halfway through playing, Rob's modem fucked up and... And, you know, he, he couldn't play anymore. And, you know, it would, at the point in the game we were at, it wouldn't just make sense for fucking Rob's character, Chip, to just fucking disappear. So we we decided to call it a day until he, he gets his problem fixed. Which is fucking weird because I just got a new fucking modem like the other fucking day. And it's fucking awesome. It really is. Like, I'm like... Like, that was probably the, that was actually, like, the biggest problem with our internet down here was we had this super fucking old router modem. It was just, it just, it got fucking way too fucking overheated and shit. Because, you know, it was, you know, it wasn't designed to have, you know, four to five computers working off of it at a given time. It was designed maybe for one maybe two computers to work off of wirelessly without overheating fucking severe, severely. I actually had to, like, we, my sister found, like, this little weird mirror thing. And I say found, like, actually, she she's going to kill me if, if she ever finds out I, I told this story. But during one of her bar, bar crawl, crawls once... She was in a gay bar and she fucking stole this, like, this really weird, I don't know what the fuck you would call it. It, it looks like a little tiny glass, marin-topped glass table. It's got, like, four, four, probably about two to three inch long legs. It's a really fat base and then, like, a mirror on top of it. So I, I, what I did with the old router is I, I flipped it upside down so the, the legs were up in the air and I put the router on top of the legs so you'd have, you know, an airflow going underneath it. And that, you know, that did the fucking trick, but it would, it would still get pretty fucking hot. Anyway, so you don't fucking watch cock, cock talk for fucking routers talking routers you watch it for funny character voices and to see who's been a mind control sex offender this fucking week so let's uh let's start from the beginning um a anatoly angelic nine's character uh received a message from some of his old kgb contacts about one of um one of uh, uh, his old friends in the KGB, uh, a, a science advisor, but I can't, I can't remember his name, but his name, ironically enough, is also Stan. My character's name is Stan. Fucking, hi everybody! It's me, Stan! How's it going? You know, you know what's funny about the Stan voice? It's actually... A combination of three different voices. It's a, uh, it's a little bit of the the base. The main base of it is the Charlie in the box from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. You know, who's ever heard of a Charlie in the box? And then there's a little bit of life is for the living, don't you know? Edwin in there, and. The, the other one is my hippie voice. I got a, I got like a dedicated hippie voice, which is, Hey man, you're harsh in my groove, man. You know, man, you're messing up my arm, man. We're just here trying to have a good time, man. That's where a lot of the the roughness in, in Stan's voice comes from, is the, the hippie voice. So I basically kind of created this fucking awful Franken voice that's just it's I hate fucking Stan I really do like I've said this before in these videos I created Stan to be the most annoying and useless fucking character in any fucking RPG ever and I succeeded in that but too fucking well I it's like I told the group today I was like 
I feel like Victor Von Frankenstein with this shit. I created a monster that I have no fucking hope in stopping. I can only fucking hope he gets killed eventually. And it's so fucked up. Usually the fucking, the whole fucking point about, about a role playing game is you're trying not to get fucking killed. And that's the weird thing too, is, you know, my instincts as a fucking player of these games, I've been playing now for probably, you know, it's 2000, probably about, yeah, probably about 10, 12 years or so, but it goes against every fucking instinct of mine to fucking, you know, to self-kill this motherfucker. I can't fucking do it. And I don't really want to MP... I, I guess I could fucking NPC him out, but I NPC'd out the last fucking character. So I kind of really don't want to do that twice in a row. So anyways, uh, back to the adventure. So uh, Anatoly gets a call about this this guy... Uh, cause there's been some, you know, hoodoo surrounding him. He, he was a, he, he was a Soviet scientist who defected in the nineties and who, you know, since the fall of the Soviet Union and shit, he's, he's kind of had more no, normalized relationships with the old country. So they haven't, they hadn't heard any fucking thing about him. They, so they were like, hey, Anatoly, since you're in America, can you fucking check this shit out? So he was like, sure. So, you know, Anatoly went to Rob's character. Got, so we were on the plane because this dude was in Nebraska of all fucking places. So, you know, while on the plane, and you know what? This might actually cause some fucking role playing drama here, but I don't fucking care. Rob fucking gave my character a fucking nightmare. He really did. I I don't fucking care what you say, Rob. I don't fucking care. If you, if you want to fucking defend yourself against my fucking accusations, which are fucking true, by the way, you can't see it, but I'm pointing my fucking finger at the camera because, you know, I'm fucking telling the truth here. Rob gives my character a fucking nightmare in which... Because I should have known something was fucking up when, you know, CJ was like, Hey, Matt, does your character want to fall asleep? I should have been like, no, fuck you, man. Fucking stands a fucking... I, 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 well, I couldn't fucking do that because I've always... I already made him straight edge. I'm making fucking Stan everything I find repugnant. He's straight edge. He's an atheist plus... He's fucking ginger. He's, you know, he, he's skinny. He's just, he's like, everything I fucking hate, he is. So, Stan falls asleep, and he starts dreaming that he's alone on the plane. And you know what? I, I'm not joking. Ever since Rob got this plane, I have been fucking waiting. Waiting. Because I, because Call of Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu, I knew... This shit would happen eventually. I was on the plane by myself. So I was like, oh no, the Langoliers. Which if you don't know what that is, it's probably, it's probably one of Stephen King's worst fucking sto stories, 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 and movies. It's just, it's so fucking retarded. It's basically these people on this plane they fucking, they wake up in the past, but the past is being eaten by these giant fucking fuzzball caterpillar mouth things. And they got to fly through a fucking, a, a fucking space vagina. It's just, it's fucking stupid. It really is. It's stupid. Go watch the Nostalgia Critics review of the Langoliers movie. Like that... I can't fucking do any justice in mocking how fucking stupid that movie is. And it was a stupid fucking story to begin with. But, you know, they all can't be fucking gold. So, that actually reminds me of something else. I finally asked CJ a question that's been bugging me about Call of Cthulhu. And, I, and it's this. Is Call of Cthulhu like a horror movie? Whereas in, in horror movies, other horror movies tend not to exist. 
Because if they did, the characters could easily fucking escape a situation in most horror movies. You may you mainly see that in in you know movies from the seventies and eighties and even the nineties. Now, because of fucking shitty things like the Scream franchise and Eli Roth fucking movies, it's become vogue to fucking to fucking you know to to um to reference other horror movies in your in your own shittier fucking horror movie. But to be honest, the real fucking bugbear of horror movies now is cell phone towers. It's always like, oh no, Michael Myers is fucking taking out the cell phone tower. I don't know how he did it, but he fucking did. Oh no. You always got to find a way to take out the cell phone tower cuz now in horror movies, if you just call the fucking police, It'd be a pretty... Somebody should make a short movie. Somebody should make one a short movie like that. That's just like... It's, it, it's basically a horror movie, but then fucking... You know, the killer gets caught within the first five fucking minutes and the person goes back to doing whatever they were doing normally. So I asked CJ if, if Call of Cthulhu was like that in the fact that H.P. Lovecraft existed, whether or not he exists in the universe that we are playing the game in. And uh, CJ's, you know, there's nothing specific about it in the book, so CJ kind of was like, you know what, I'm going to just rule that Lovecraft doesn't exist in this universe. So, you know, that finally answered that question. So, um, anyways, getting back to um, what was... uh, what was happening? I got blown by a zombie that ate my dick. So, you know, that's fucking something. So my character woke up and was like, Oh my God, my dick! You know, and, and Rob was all like, Hey man, what happened? I You know, I couldn't do anything to you because I'm, I'm flying a fucking plane. It's like, fuck you, Rob. I've, fuck you, Rob. I've played fucking, I've played other RPGs with you. I've, I know how you fucking think. You think a lot like me. You would totally fucking kill your character to kill fucking Stan. You would. You fucking would in a heartbeat. Because cause you fucking hate Stan. I hate Stan. Everybody fucking hates Stan. Stan is fucking loathsome and horrible. He really fucking truly is. So, um... So, we, we get to the airport. Uh, relatively safe safely uh there was some turbulence when we were trying to land but thankfully rob has a better fucking track record with flying planes than he does fucking flying uh, f- <laughs> i i would hope fucking rob has a better record of flying planes instead of flying fucking cars driving cars like rob like uh he is you do not at least in D and I don't know if in real life he'd do the fucking same shit but and Call of Cthulhu, you do not want to get in a car with that motherfucker. So, uh, we get to the airport. It's, uh, relatively uneventful. We end up looking up, uh, Anatoly's friend in one of the local phone books. And we find out he, he's living with some, uh, a woman. So we decide to go look him up. And when we get to his house, it's it's been uh, barricaded over with police tape. So Anatoly goes around back, uh, breaks into the house. I could have been such a dick too. I could I every fucking ounce of my being was just, just I just wanted to fucking be like, hey Anatoly, did you break in yet? Just to be a fucking asshole. So, uh, he gets in there, he, he's looking around, he notices a, a chalk outline on the floor, and god damn it, shit went by too fast, but I had a great joke for that. I wanted to be like, this weirdest hopscotch thing I've ever seen. You do not draw hopscotch. That's my shitty fucking Russian. I got a shitty fucking Canadian accent too, like... It pisses Ange off to no fucking end. It'll probably piss off any fucking Canadian, really, to be honest with you. Because it's... <laughs> it's another fucking composite voice of mine. Because I, I basically... I basically have based it off of 
there was this show here in America. I, I don't know if it played internationally, but it's called Cow and Chicken. It's basically kind of Cartoon Network's low rent knockoff of things like Rocco's Modern Life and Ren and Stimpy. You know, just weird for the fucking sake of weird. So in there they would have beavers and beavers would have this really fucking obnoxious Canadian, this weird fucking Canadian accent. And so it's, it's based somewhat off of that, but it's also based somewhat off of Kevin Smith's Canadian accent because like, I'll be honest, like 90% of the shit I know about Canada comes from fucking Kevin Smith. He loves fucking Canada, though. So, you know, don't don't fucking, you know, don't take off my fucking, you know, my shitty fucking accent. It's like, oh, man, Ke- Kevin Smith is a rampant fucking Canadian folk. No, he loves fucking Canada. He really does. But it's uh, it's basically, oh, how's it going, buddy? Uh, I was uh, I was thinking about uh, going down to the uh, Tim Hortons down in uh, Barnaby, eh? And uh, getting some Timbits. You want it? See, so, so that's my Canadian. I'm thinking of just, like, doing a whole, like, my next character is fucking Canadian. It's like, oh, how's it going? Uh, I'm, I'm Officer uh, Beaver Pelt from the uh, Canadian Bureau of Cthulhu. I understand you've had some activity down here, eh? Fucking, I can I can hear Ange right fucking now. Like he's not even watching this fucking video, but I can hear him just screaming, just like, ah, it fucking hurts. Like the first time I fucking did that, Angelic was actually like, listen to how I talk, motherfucker. I don't sound like that. I sound like you. I'm like, that's because it's fucking Canadian voodoo magic. You, you've affected me with your back bacon and politeness and, you know, free health care and shit. You polluted my mind. That's why you sound like me. Canadians are shifters. <laughs> so anyways, back to the fucking actual shit about the game. So he notices the, the, the fucking uh, the chalk outline. And nothing else, really. Just some books. Like ge- ge- geology books and shit like that. Another joke, you know, you know, fucking, you know, geographical history of the of the Midwest. It's flat. Seriously, though, fucking somebody needs to make that fucking book. Wildwood Claire, if, like fucking, if somebody can fucking tell her, like I know she's a geologist. She needs to fucking write the book, a geological history of the Midwest. It's flat. Subtitle. It's flat. Like that. That'd be the most honest fucking book ever written. So, you know, no, you know, no cool books like no, you know, no book bound in human flesh and written with a a mixture of fucking blood and gold and unholy fucking ichor from a creature from beyond the stars. You know, nothing cool like that. So we decide to go to the police station. This is where the, the funnest part of the fucking adventure comes. Because they want to find out what's happened to uh, uh, Anatoly's friend. Now, my character... (laughs) I shouldn't have fucking said this, but I was just like... We were going in to see Anatoly's friend, and the officer taking us in was like, Do you have anything to declare? And I was like, oh my god, it's, it's fucking now or never to be fucking obnoxious Stan... So my character just blurts out, I have something to declare. These two guys are my best friends in the whole world. (laughs) And Rob's character just glares at me. So because of that, they fucking think I'm mentally retarded. So I get to go around, you know, I don't get, you know, I'm not stuck in some stuffy fucking room finding out facts or talking to a murderer. No, I get a delightful tour around the property. So, you know, Rob and, uh, well, I should refer, I should call him by his character name. Chip and Anatoly are, uh, well, not really interrogating this dude. Like, I, I told fucking Rob, because, you know, this dude wasn't being very cooperative. I was like, dude, fucking treat him like the Joker in fucking Dark Knight. And he was like, 
I'm not going to do that. The fucking police are watching. I was like, the fucking police watched when fucking Batman did it. Didn't fucking do anything to him. Like, just throw a fucking a, a chair in front of the fucking door and beat him the fucking shit. I'm pretty sure he'll fucking tell you some shit. So, you know, they get, they get some, um, they do get some valuable information about, um, about the place where he's working at and about how there's like, uh, some weird going on. It's, it's very, you know, it's a hostile workplace kind of type thing. Um, also we find out that he has been investigating the nemesis theory, which is basically that there's, you know, there's another star in our solar system and it affects shit. It's kind of like Nimbiru, but, Nemesis is actually a star instead of a planet, but it, it, it's it, you know it's it's fucking bupkis. It's fucking you know it, it's it's unprovable bupkis that was fucking disproved a long fucking time ago. So, or was it? Oh yeah. So they find that out. Um, while touring the grounds, I actually do find out some. Well, it's not, like, useful information, but I make a, a an observation that probably will come in handy later on. There's a lot of grasshoppers outside of, of the police building. Like, a lot. Like, every like every step, like, a dozen grasshoppers fly up. Because there, there's just so fucking many. So, you know, I discovered that thing. Uh, we meet up. My character... <laughs> I was waiting for this moment too, and this because once my character was off doing his own tour, I was like, I gotta say this line when he fucking meets up with the guys again. So my character just blurts out, "Hey guys, I'm a junior deputy now. I got a badge and everything." So I'm gonna role play that shit now. Just be like, "Hey everybody, don't worry, I'm a junior deputy." Here's my badge. Just like a little rinky dink fucking plastic badge. Uh, and you know what the funny thing is? My character's intelligence is pretty fucking high. It's. I'm pretty fucking sure it's almost as fucking high as you can get. I'm think, I think it's one point less. So I might actually just start playing Stan like he's severely fucking autistic. Like, he's really fucking smart about being a journalist. He's really fucking smart about that kind of shit. But when it comes to, like, any fucking social situation, like, fuck no. He's just, he's just like, So, um, sadly, this is where the game Peter's uh, out. We, we managed to walk to the observatory and we we were about to go into a meeting with one of the lead researchers when Rob's internet kind of fizzled out fizzled out much in the same way as this video so you know that was call of cthulhu for this week hopefully hopefully you know hopefully we'll actually be able to play some other time this week finish up this adventure or next week, whatever. So, um, yeah, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, okay, and now for our regularly scheduled video. And I will say offhand, this will probably be, probably will be a short one because um, halfway through playing, Rob's modem fucked up and, and you know, he, he couldn't play anymore and... Yeah, it would at the point in the game we were at, it wouldn't just make sense for fucking Rob's character Chip to just fucking disappear. So we we decided to call it a day until he he gets his problem fixed, which is fucking weird because I just got a new fucking modem like the other fucking day and it's fucking awesome. It really is like I'm like like that was probably the that was actually like the biggest problem with our internet down here was we had this super fucking old router modem. It was just it, it just it got fucking way too fucking overheated and shit. 
because you know it was, you know, it wasn't designed to have you know four to five computers working off of it at a given time. That you know that did the fucking trick, but it would it would still get pretty fucking hot. Anyway, so you don't fucking watch cock, cock talk for fucking routers for talking routers. You watch it for funny character voices and to see who's been a mind control sex offender this fucking week. So let's uh let's start from the beginning. Um a- Anatoly, Angelic Nine's character, uh received a message from some of his old KGB contacts about one of it was designed maybe for one, maybe two computers to work off of wirelessly without overheating fucking severe, severely. I actually had to like we my sister found like this little weird mirror thing. And I say found like actually she she's going to kill me if if she ever finds out I I told this story. But during one of her bar crawl crawls once she was in a gay bar and she fucking stole this like this really weird I don't know what the fuck you would call it. It it looks like a little tiny glass marin topped glass table. It's got like four four probably about two to three inch long legs. It's a really fat base and then like a mirror on top of it. So I, I what I did with the old router is I, I flipped it upside down so the the legs were up in the air and I put the router on top of the legs so you'd have you know, an airflow going underneath it. And 